HTTP cores. What is HTTP cores? Why do we need it? Cores, which stands for Cross Origin Resource Sharing, is a mechanism which uses additional HTTP headers to give a web application running at one origin access to select resource at a different origin. For example, the front end JavaScript at httpsdomainA.com uses an XML HTTP request to make a request to domaind.com/beta.json. Modern browsers support this mechanism in APIs such as XML HTTP request to mitigate the risk of cross-origin requests. So what requests use cores? XML HTTP request, web fonts, web GL textures, image and frames drawn to the canvas, and lastly, CSS shapes from images are just some examples. So let's cover three cases of cores requests. We have simple requests, requests with preflight, and lastly, requests with authentication. So simple requests. Some requests don't trigger at pre-flight, which we will cover later. We denote these as simple requests. Note that the formal specification doesn't introduce this terminology of simple requests. It's commonly used otherwise. So what makes a request simple? All these conditions need to be met. First, the method type is either a get, head, or a post. It only accepts headers to be manually set, including either an accept, accept language, content language, content type, and so on, so specifically from this list. Also. We only allow values for the content type header to be either URL encoded form data, form data that's multi-part, or plain text data. So if you have XML data, it's automatically not considered a simple request. Lastly, no event listeners are registered on the upload request object or readable stream objects used in the request. So request headers need to include the origin header, which allows the server to identify if it should support the request. So for example, we have our origin as softwareengineers.com. For the response headers, it needs to include the access control allow origin header to indicate the origins that are permitted as part of the request. This header has two possibilities. First, you can have an asterisk, and the wildcard represents all addresses are accepted, or it can be one particular origin which you indicate. So, for example, apc.com. Here's an example, you can pause the video if you're interested. So, just a remark if you ever run into an error with cores, you can't actually catch it inside your JavaScript. Instead, you'll find it in the JavaScript files. So now for pre-flight requests, so these are requests that are not simple. So unlike simple requests, pre-flight requests first send an HTTP request using the options method to the resource on the other domain to determine if the request is safe to send. So just quickly recall that options in HTTP 1.1 method used to determine further information from servers and is considered safe, so it creates no mutation on the server. So the request headers include the origin, the access control request method, so for example put, the access control request headers, which are the different headers in the request. So here's an example. For the response, we have the access control allow origin, the access control allow methods, which is the method allowed. And then we have the allow headers, which are the different headers that are allowed. And lastly, we have the access control max age, which is the maximum age for which the HTTP request can be cached for. So here's an example of all the different fields. So here's a secondary example taken from Mozilla for the pre-flight request. You can pause the video if you're interested. First you do an options and then you do your actual request if it goes through. So one recommendation is to not send redirect requests. After you do an option for a course message, if you send a 308, some web browsers may return an error. So requests with credentials. By default in the cross-site XML HTTP requests, browsers don't send credentials. So you can take credentials in the form of authorization as an HTTP header, or you can have it in the form of a cookie. To get credentials to work, you have to manually specify in the request object and flag, such as an XML HTTP requests with credentials equals true. Similarly, the response needs to have access control allow credentials to be true. So here's another example with credential request. So credentialed requests and wildcards. So while responding to a credentialed request, the server must specify an origin in the value of access control allow origin header, instead of specifying the wildcard there. So that's a restriction that we have over here. So in the origin here, we can only have food. For example, we can't have a wildcard for credentials. So why do we even need cores? What are the security implications without it? So if you log into bank.com, which is a single web page, and then has an API at api.bank.com, the front end serves bank.com, but then the API request is actually a cores request because you consider it as another domain. Cookies are typically stored for authentication. So if you're using cookies on HTTP requests for that domain, the cookies will be kept. So if you browse to evil.com, and send an HTTP request from your browser to api.bank.com, the browser will typically attach those cookies as part of the request. So they can log into your request. Oh no. So this is known as cross-site request forgery. And by using cores, you prevent it. Thanks for watching and feel free to subscribe for new videos every Friday.